Hi, my name is Stan, and this video is one of a series of videos that I'm doing about using vectors in the Unreal Engine, uh, with a particular focus on trying to give uh, some uh, kind of basic information on what vectors are and how they're used and uh, why they're particularly useful. Um, so I'm blending some kind of general vector theory stuff with the, uh, the specifics of how these things can be achieved in the Unreal Engine. Um, and in this video, I'm going to focus on relative vectors. Um, and what that means is that we're going to look at both vector addition and vector subtraction. Um, uh, so, so far, we've been, uh, when I say so far, I mean in the previous videos in this playlist, uh, we've looked at uh, position vectors or location vectors, as they're called in uh, Unreal, which are vectors that are conceptually have the um, the or yeah the, the start of the vector is at the world origin and the end of the vector is at whatever object it is we, we're describing the location of so the the start of the vector is zero 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 and the end is uh, whatever numbers we've got um, but vectors are really versatile and uh, if you say that actually the vector that you're using the start of the vector is somewhere else you can then have a different endpoint in space. And this is if you're using vectors for um, for space displacement at distance between, well, uh, yeah, the displacement, I think, is the right word, between two places. Um, and so we could talk about the, the vector that is the relative position vector of the enemy from the player. So this is uh, a vector where the start of the vector is that the player and the end of that vector is wherever the enemy is. Okay. So this uh, uh, means if we're using those two particular uh, vectors, if we have the vector that is the absolute location vector of the player, by absolute I mean uh, the start of the vector is the world origin, and we've got the relative position vector uh, of the enemy from the player, we can from those two work out what the absolute location vector of the enemy is by adding those two vectors together. And the simple thing about addition in vectors is, if you're drawing out diagrams with your arrows and you do, you've got two uh, vectors that are basically end, one, the end of one becomes the start of the next one, then uh, you can do vector addition to find out what the uh, end point of the, the combined vectors is. It doesn't have to be just two, you can combine as add together as many vectors as you like like this and get a resultant vector by adding them together. The maths behind it is actually really, really simple. We don't need to deal with it because uh, uh, the Unreal Engine gives us uh, blueprint nodes to do exactly this for us. Um, but actually, with, if you've got a, a vector that's three numbers, which is x, y, and z, and you've got two of these vectors, to add them together, you just add the x's and you've got the new x. You add the y's, you've got the new y. And you got add the z's and you get the new z. Uh, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. So um, we can use this uh, if we want to uh, use something that we know as a relative vector. Um, and in, in this particular occasion, um, we might be finding the player's absolute location. And they've got a relative uh, vector from the player to something else. And in a couple of minutes, I'm going to do a, a demonstration of doing that with a box floating in the air uh, and adding the, the vectors together and how that box moves around, given that its position is defined by these two vectors. You'll see what I mean when I get there. Um, so the, the location here, I, just to reiterate, uh, location vector of player plus relative position of vector of enemy gives us the absolute location of the enemy. Um, you can also do the other way around. So with these same, almost the same three vectors, um, but actually I've reversed one of these vectors on purpose uh, to show it. So if we knew two out of these three vectors, we could find the third. Uh, so if we've got the vector, the absolute location of an enemy, and we've got the absolute location of the player, we can find the relative vector from the enemy to the player, which is uh, the player uh, absolute vector minus the enemy absolute vector. I'm going to just generalize that, um, which is basically if I've got two 
uh, absolute vectors of B, uh, A and B, and I want to find the vector A to B, then we do this by vector subtraction of doing B minus A. It's slightly odd to get your head around because it feels like it might be the wrong way around. And to be honest, half the time I get this wrong. But all that happens is it's basically what I'm trying to do is the opposite way from what I want. And I just go back in and reverse those, oh, reverse the two here. And again, the um, the maths behind this is superbly simple. It's just um, the x of, uh, so if you're going from A to B, it's the x of B minus the x of A, the y of B minus the y of A, and the y of uh, the z of B minus the uh, z of A. Again, we don't actually have to learn that and know it because there are there is a node to do that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to come out of this uh, PowerPoint and theoretical space and I'm going to go into Unreal and show you these two ideas in action. So here we are in the Unreal Engine. I've uh, just got a third-person template map with a few things that are picking around in here. This is kind of these objects here as a result of me doing earlier videos. Um, I tend to just kind of carry on from where I've left off, basically. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do two things. The first one is um, going to show you adding vectors together. Um, so we're going to have an object that's just going to be uh, floating in a, a, a position that is relative to the player. So as the player moves around, the object moves around. And why not? Let's use this, uh, this tray that we've got here. Um, so I'm going to go up to, uh, I don't know exactly where I need to be. I've got it on the outline. Let's go into the details. Right, so I, you can turn this uh, static mesh into a blueprint. And this just brings up, yeah, I, I don't want to change the parent class. I want to use the static mesh, statish, static mesh actor. Um, I'm going to put that in that folder there and just accept the default name. Okay. And I'm going to go into the event graph here and we're going to use the event tick so that it's constantly updating. So we're going to float it in the air about a little way ahead of the player um, in the X direction. Let's have a quick look at the axis. So red is X. So we're going to use that. And each of these squares that you can see here is 100 units. So I'm just going to float it in the air about Let's make it 300 units in front of the player. So it's just kind of a weird floaty thing at this position in front of the player. So I'm going to start this by, I'm going to create a vector, which is going to be that relative vector. I'm going to call this player to tray. And it's a good idea to use descriptive names for vectors uh, to help you understand what's going on. And this is a, a relative vector. So I'm saying what it's from and what it's to. Uh, and I'm going to make that. Uh, instance editable, not that I particularly need it to be, and compile, and I'm going to put in that those values, 300, and we've got 0 and 0, and that's fine. Now, because the, the actual location vector for the player, which comes from this spawn point, uh, actually it comes from the player character blueprint, is um, not down on the floor, and if we keep Z as zero, that tray is going to float in the air in front. And if we keep Y as zero, it's going to stay fixed at some point in space about here. And as the player moves around, that relative vector is going to stay the same. So it's always going to be in the X direction from the player, regardless of which way the player is facing. Okay, so let's go into here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab hold of the location of the player. So get player pawn. Um, so that's the thing that the player is controlling, which in this case is the third person character. And get actor location. And then we're going to take this player to tray vector and we're going to add them together. And what tradition? Here we go. Now. It will make no difference if I put, plug them in the opposite way around because vector addition is just like normal addition, which is that, you know, 3 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 3. So um, that's what is called uh, commutative, uh, if you want the, the maths term for that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to set the location of this tray. So this, um, uh, this actor that's the tray 
so we're going to get a uh, reference to self, and we're going to do set at our location. And pull out of that. We're using uh, event tick, so it means this will update constantly. So as the player moves about, it will constantly update the location of that tray. Now, I've been very confident about this, and I always feel like when I'm doing live programming, which is what I am doing, that it's interesting to see whether it works or not. And it doesn't. And why not? Ah, uh, we've got a, um, a message here. Mobility of this thing. Static mesh component has to be movable if you'd like to move. Okay. Um, I understand what's going on there, which is that if we go to the static, static mesh component, keep getting that wrong of this uh, actor that we created. And we look at the static mesh, it's set to static in its mobility. We change that to movable. Hopefully that's uh, going to make it happen. And now, yes, the tray is floating in front of the player. And as the player moves around, that relative vector stands as they go up, it goes with them as they move around. So we could uh, we could use the debug lines to draw those vectors if we wanted. The uh, uh, the origin to the player, so the location of the player, the origin somewhere in this corner. Um, and you can kind of imagine the line from there to the player. And then the line from the player to the tray is straight along the x-axis. And uh, as we move about, it moves around with us. So that's adding two vectors together. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to use vector subtraction uh, to be able to get the, the vector between two objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a another character, which I'm going to call an enemy, which isn't going to be controllable by the player, uh, but is going to constantly look at the player. So rather than moving with the, uh, the player, it will just be staring at the player constantly and moving with them. So um and i'll do that with uh, subtraction so i'm gonna get into a uh, third person character and it's gonna find that character uh, blueprints and duplicate it i'm gonna call this a bp enemy enemy there we go and this has actually got all the movement code in it but let's just show that Oh, I need to put one in the world. Of course, I can't see anything until I put one in the world. So let's put an enemy in the world there. It pops up some of its features on the bottom. And when we press play, it's there in the world, but it isn't being controlled by me because the control, the actual mapping of the controls to the actions is only being done in the player. Controller, which is then connecting through to the player character. Oh, we've been talking all, all the way through that in one. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave all that code in there because I don't really care about it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in something that's um, uh, on the uh, event tick, and this is gonna make that character always look at the player. So once again, we need um, to get the player location. Get uh, player pawn, get that uh, location, okay, and we also want a reference to self, and get actor location. So we need to work out which order we're going to want these in, uh, because unlike addition, subtraction isn't uh, commutative, to use that number again. Basically, 5 minus 3 isn't the same as 3 minus 5. Um, and so, uh, from earlier in the video, if we want the vector from A to B, we need to do B minus A. Okay, so we're going to do the vector from the enemy, which is the south, to B, which is the, uh, the player pawn. We want B, which is the player pawn, minus A. So this is, hopefully, this is the right way around. I feel like it is, but if I've got it wrong, I will just flick it and put it the other way around. Um, so, and we need to set... Uh, uh, so, again, we use the, the south here. Set actor. Ah! What do we set? Can we set the forward vector? 
No, we can get the forward vector, interestingly. Get the forward vector of the different elements here, but we can't set the forward vector. That's because it needs to know more than just the forward vector. And what we're going to want to do is actually set rotation. Set vector rotation. So this is a little bit complicated, and now there's going to be a little bit here of uh, just, you know, I accept what I'm saying. I'm going to split this structure bin. So um, actually, I, I made a mistake there. I shouldn't have done splitting that pin because what I'm going to do is uh, make a rotation from axes. And this allows us to define three vectors, a forward vector, a rightwards vector, and an upwards vector, which will then uh, create the rotation that we need for the object. And so we know the forward vector. What I'm going to do is just give it the upwards vector, which is 0, 0, 1, so upwards in the z direction. I'm going to ignore the right vector. I have just tested this, and I believe it's going to find it out for itself. So let's just test this and then come back and explore it. Um, the the reason why that box and the, that image is coming up is I haven't, when I select that, there's a camera attached to it. And so it shows you what that camera is uh, is looking at, which is a third person camera. So it's acting behind that character. All right. So hopefully this is now staring at me. And it is as I move around it. Try and bonk it with my train. Actually, that's interesting because it makes it move. <laughs> hey, that's fun. All right. But as I rotate around it, it keeps looking at me. And as I go, oh, what it doesn't do is, oh, yeah, it is, it is, it is leaning over backwards as I go up. I hadn't known it was going to do that. So that's curious. And I might want to fix that if I was going to do this as a, as a proper thing. Um, but there we go. So let's go back into that. Uh, thing and just do a quick recap of what we're doing. So we're doing uh, we're doing b minus a to give us from a to b, and in this case uh, the b is the uh, the player location, and the a is the uh, is the enemy location. And then we're just using that to create a rotator, uh, sorry, a rotation from forwards and up. Um, and uh, a right vector, and I suspect that if we worked out the uh, the vector right, which means uh, you've got, if you kind of imagine three axes from the player, you've got facing forwards, going upwards, and then going off to the right hand side, and that would define exactly your rotation. And I think if we put the right in, uh, then it might stop it from doing that thing of leaning over backwards. But I'm not entirely sure, and I'm not going to bother testing that. So, in this video we've explored uh, relative vectors, uh, we've looked at adding two vectors together, and we've looked at subtracting one vector from another, and how they can be used. And that's it from me for now.